Did I hear you say your battery went through your prop? Yep, lost the prop, both sides. Oh, jeez. Well, put on a pot of tea or make yourself a cup of coffee. Yes, this video is about safety, but no, it's not about Rip Man and his unfortunate loss of his battery going through his propeller. He knows better than that. It's about the decision-making process, and I'm going to keep hammering on it until Dell stops claiming that it's skills that will keep you alive only, until Kurt quits sending students into the air with zero training, with zero proficiency in kiting. I don't care if they get training or not. you got to be proficient in kiting. And how the decisions we make affect the community. Let me explain. And there's no better way to explain than a little bit of a story. Two weekends ago, I went down with a bunch of other guys, and we were going to fly. Saturday morning, we woke up, and this is what we had. A sixteenth of a mile visibility. Couldn't see across the field that we were going to use as an LZ. Well, the pressure to fly was immense. A lot of these guys had driven quite a long ways. Some of them got lost on Friday night, so they didn't get a chance to fly Friday night. And I knew, as the visibility started to clear, somebody had to be first. But they better get it right. I mean, you see this sort of thing at fly-ins all the time. Nobody's flying. All of a sudden, one guy gets airborne. And the minute he doesn't crash... There's 20 other people getting ready to launch. It's almost as if they can't think for themselves. They just want some assurance that there's not mortality involved in taking off today. We need to think for ourselves. So two of us got set up, Brian and myself. And Brian took off and stayed underneath the fog layer about the time the visibility hit one mile. I decided to take off and poke up through one of the holes in the layer. I'm glad that I did. But I knew people were going to follow me, and I better get the burn-off rate of the fog right because too much more than 35 or 40 minutes above the fog or up above the clouds, and people would start getting lost. And if the holes all closed in, we wouldn't have a way back down. But looking at what was going to happen with the weather, I thought it was an acceptable risk. I'd patterned the weather the previous morning, <clears throat> the exact same scenario set up. As soon as the temperature dew point spread, got to about three degrees, the visibility started to increase rapidly. Once the sunshine could get down to the ground, it heated everything up, and pretty much within an hour or so, all of the clouds and all of the fog was gone. It was clear skies. So about midweek after this event, I had three people express to me their deep concerns over the recent deaths and injuries in PPG. And this is such a recurring theme. It's the beginning of the year. People get hurt. People that are proficient and fly a lot have to take a step back and say, oh, man, could that have been me? My friend Ben from North Carolina expressed to me something his instructor told him. He said that just because four out of five pilots make a decision does not mean it's right for you. His point was that we as the paramotoring community are notorious for making bad decisions. I'd like to go one step further and say it's because we haven't had any training in the areas that expose us to the extreme risk right before an accident. It's very difficult to do in a single seat airplane or flying device. In a two-seat airplane, the instructor can sit right next to you like Kyle Glee has done on his videos. In fact, I'll put a link to his video that I absolutely love the format of. It's him giving some instruction as they're flying along. And he can real-time analyze the decisions that the pilot is making and give them advice on how to take advantage of situations or avoid situations without having it to unfold to the point of being dangerous. So how do we rectify this problem? Well, my single biggest piece of advice would be to immerse yourself in the study of accidents. We don't have a huge database in the PPG world. The foot flyer 
website that Jeff Goyne maintains has quite a few. Look at the NTSB database for general aviation airplanes. It's very similar what causes most of the accidents. Low acrobatics, aerobatics, maneuvering, high G maneuvering near the ground, loss of aircraft control, stall in the airplane, VFR, visual flight, continued into instrument conditions, bad weather, weather decisions. Yes, there's some mechanical failures. It's not significant of enough of the proportion of the accidents to throw that out there very often as a potential cause. I think if you read 100 accident reports in the NTSB database, you will find that 80% of them were decision-based accidents that could have been avoided. It's a real tough pill to swallow. Nobody wants to admit that head work is what will keep you safe most of the time. They, they, they want to point to something happened. They, they want to be exonerated from making bad decisions, even when it's pointed out to them that, hey, that was a dumb idea. Um, we just need more looking into it ourselves. We, we need to make these decisions on our own, not based on what our flying buddies do. Those guys can help us, but you as the pilot in command need to act like it. You need to realize and remember this is an activity that can claim your life. So make the best decisions possible every single time. If you enjoy maneuvering, do it up high. If you're really into proximity flying, do it somewhere that's maybe not quite as dangerous. Uh, you know, open, open fields at the very minimum. Soft sand, if possible. Over water with flotation and a rescue. I'll leave you with the footage of the rest of our flight. It was really a perfect morning, and I think a lot of guys got to do something that Saturday morning that they typically wouldn't. Man, I want the accidents in our activity to just cease, to just go away. Nice. Hey. This, this is nice, huh? This is a, an amazing morning this, to be flying. This was a treat, buddy. No doubt about it. It's perfect. Let's. Well, it's kind of ratty down low here, too, so. Yeah, it, it's very ratty, yeah, but so what? You're a professional pilot. Yeah. Retired. Right. Semi, semi retired. This thing don't want to come down, bro. I know, there's, where there's holes, there's thermals blasting up through the holes. Yep. The craziest thing. I feel like I'm just floating. It's a pretty morning. All right, I'm bingo on gas. I'm going to go back inland and call it a morning. It was a good, good morning. Okay, I'm coming with you. I'm just going to fly by the skin. Thank <laughs> you.